All right, class. So the first thing we're going to start off with is um, we're going to create the uh, first level, or should I say the first um, stair, the first set of stairs, which is also um, basically built into like the foundation part of the building here. Um, as you might be able to tell from, from this drawing here, this piece here is technically associated with that first step. We're just going to confirm that. And yes, so that is associated with the first step. So we're going to make that. So now we're going to select the polyline and we're going to plane our surface. So that it's all one piece, we're going to change our display to shaded so that you can see that here all of this is now associated together. And as you can see, um, from the elevation here, it is six inches high, which also is the same height as our first step. tool here which is um, goes in each axis um, according to the grid and we're going to select the ball here which I'll show you how that works and we're going to put six inches and so it's going to give us six inches worth of worth of height for our um, for our foundation where we're going to start which <clears throat> is also our first step. So next, now that we have that, we can start working on our walls. Um, so we're going to go here and we're going to start a new layer. And we're just going to actually hide our foundation. And we're going to select a nice uh, unique color will be green. We're going to use that polyline tool again. And um, basically, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to, I'm going to trace the outer lines of the building as one. And then I'm going to come back, I'm going to trace the inner lines as one. And then we're going to cut out the bathroom, because that's going to all of this is going to be solid, so we have to take that out.
So there we have the outer lines. And now we're going to create the inner lines. So I'm going to select all those, um, both outer and inner lines, and we're going to do something called isolate, just to make sure that the profile is exactly how I want it to be. You know, we could work on the cuts for the doors and window openings later. So I'm going to plane our surface this. As you can see, this is all one piece now. The surface is all one piece. And we can actually take those lines that we don't need and get rid of those. <clears throat> so now that we have our surface and we also have our first stair, um, what we can do is um, we can select the surface the stairs on. We're going to move that up six inches. So that it is at the um, exact same height as the um, as the first piece. Um, actually, we should probably save that step for later because we actually have other stairs that we have to create. So what I will do is turn the stairs on and we can hide the walls. So we have these, um, these other two steps that we have to create. Um, and so I'll show you how we can do that with the polyline tool again. First or our second step, all we have to do is uh, trace the lines again just to get that same overall shape. select the line that we just drew and we're going to plane our surface again so that we get a solid piece or a solid surface to manipulate and then we can delete that line so we're going to select our surface here and we can zoom in to take a look So if we go into our um, elevation view, we can move this up. Oh, I'm sorry, we extrude this first. So we're going to extrude that six inches just like we did the other ones with the blue ball here. Or oh, I'm sorry, this. Um, the 
blue ball here in the middle. Once you press it, you pick your desired height and it'll extrude up for you. And as you see, um, the stairs or the step is in the exact same location as the other step, which is incorrect as you can tell from the uh, elevation here. So we're going to go ahead and make that accurate by increasing this going up another six inches so that we get uh, this look here. Okay. And so if we go back into wireframe at the top, So there's actually one more step that we have to create. So we have two steps and we need three. <clears throat> so our final step is going to be this one here. So now that we plane our surface, we can select our curve, just like the others, delete it. And we could, um, so now that uh, this is solid, we, so once again, we select the blue ball, extrude six inches. And then we have our last step here. So we have our stairs here. So now we can start um, actually building our walls.
select the walls. I move those up uh, six inches. And then we can start extruding these walls up. And according to the drawing, the walls are going to come up. So we have about six inches. Our walls are going to be nine feet tall. starting to reflect what we have here in 3D. Um, and then we can fix up some of these issues like here. So what I'll do now is I will go to my drawing layer, lock both my walls and my um, stairs, because what I'm trying to do is actually take and take this. I'm gonna copy it. Actually, want to copy this right, right on this next pl platform here. So that we can see um, while we are actually creating things, we can see the floor plan as it actually sits because in reality it's, it's underneath. So we have two. And you can see how this uh, will start coming together. Um, you can see our, once we go into the ghosted view, you can see where our windows will sit relative to the walls. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually fix this door issue here. We're going to start making the doors and door openings as well. First thing we have to do to, um, to fix this issue with the door is we're going to take the box we're going to use the box command, <clears throat> and we're actually going to uh, refill this hole here, and then we're going to cut it back out so that we actually have a header, and it's not just a split piece like this because walls don't really work this way. Select all this and Boolean Union merge all coplanar faces. So now our wall is back regular. Um, and we can actually go in and cut this door out. All right. As you can see, we have to draw a floor here. So we're going to do that next after we create this door.
All right. So now we have um, now we have our floor, our stairs, and our walls. We have our door started. Um, took a bit of complications, but we've got it. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to cut out this next door here. Um, so I'll select these pieces here, actually. So we have our floor. Um, next, um, yes, we're going to cut out the door here for our bathroom. So we're going to subtract the um, the door from the wall using boolean difference. And remember, we have to um, bring this slightly past the wall. We select the wall first, and then we select what we want to cut out. And as you can see, um, we successfully made our wall or our, and our door opening. So next, um, we'll start working on windows next.
Alrighty, so here we are. Um, we're going to start working on the windows. Um, the first window we're going to work on is uh, the side window here. Um, it seems to be a good place to start. So what I'm going to do first, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to look at the profile of the window itself. So we have trim and then we have where we cut. So we're actually going to cut here. So the first thing I want to do is I can take this window, the entirety of this window, and I can use it as a reference. pieces lined up just right. So now I'm going to bring this out back here. And now I have to find out um, actually how tall this window is from our uh, third step. So it's three foot two off the ground. So we're going to select all of this the pack. So now I'm just going to double check that this is correct. step I should say three foot two all right perfect so um, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut the profile of the actual window itself out and then I'm actually going to also cut the um, like this trim piece here or like the framing of the window and then I'll save the trim for last and so basically I'm going to just do the same thing that I did with the uh, door since all of our dimensions are on point So you just want a Boolean difference. So we 
we have our profile cut out of the, the wall. And then we're actually going to replace that with, um, I'm sorry, we're going to take these lines here and we're going to create our, um, our window frame. But first, this piece has to be cut out. surface uh, here and now we're actually going to make a new layer for our windows oh we already have one okay to where it was uh, and then we're actually just going to extrude it So we have our framing of our window. Um, and then we have our trim that, you know, we can come back to the trim. So that's the first window that we're going to um, use as an example. And then we're going to save these windows for last. We can start with our living room window, which looks a bit complex, but we should be able to manage. <clears throat> We're just going to use the same idea as the last window. We're going to take all of our reference pieces. measure uh, how far from our first step this is going to go so two foot two from there and one foot two and one foot two from the top
so we're just going to go ahead and line everything up. Uh, this piece here. Yep, that looks about right. So our window is in the correct location. Um, let's take a look at what we have so far. First is we're going to cut the entire profile of the window out just so we can get a better look and better practice. And then we'll replace it. profile of the window has been cut. Um, we're going to actually go back and replace it because this window is a bit more complex than the other one. Um, but where we can start is the, um, the actual trim of the window. Or I should say the frame. So we have um, this line here, this one.
what I'm doing is uh, basically just creating the overall silhouette of the window and then just subtracting the um, the extra pieces out so that we have you know an entire window frame here uh, and then this bottom box here yeah this bottom box is basically the other part of the window essentially and so I'm just gonna repeat that one more time here As you can see, we have uh, we have our window drawn um, fairly accurately. All we have to do is basically put our uh, trim in there. Which, once again, we're going to save for last. All right, so uh, that window is completed now. Now we can move on to, uh, we have more windows to take care of. Here we have, um, we have some casement windows. They, they appear to be casement windows. Um, we have three and then we have two. And then on this side of the building we have two windows and then we still have to take care of those three other windows on the uh, other side of the house and then uh, you just take a look at um progress so far everything's starting to come along So we're going to take care of these casement windows. Just like all the other windows, we're going to um, use the information that we've been given to um, create, basically, um, in our 3D model here. So we're going to select these and zoom in. And then we're just going to flip these upside the right way. Or upwards, <clears throat> and then we're uh, we're just gonna drag these uh, silhouettes over so that we can get our correct heights. Um, we already know we know where they should go, but we just gotta line everything up just to make sure that we're correct. There's nothing wrong with double checking. So we're going to do this separately. And uh, everything lines 
this up uh, correctly. Yep, everything lines up correctly. So now we just take our bottom pieces and we um, bring them down. And do the same for these three windows here. As you can see, those don't line up. We got this one. Okay, and now we can uh, fix our heights, so uh, everything appears to line up correctly here.
All right, so we have our desired heights for the windows. Basically, we're going to do the same thing as all the other ones. We're going to cut out the profiles um, of the actual glass itself, and then we're going to make the trim of the window. I'm sorry, the window frame. And then once again, we're going to come back to all the trim parts later because those are more finishing touches on the building itself. Um, so that we can actually uh, cut the windows out so we have our holes in our walls and then next um, we're actually going to boolean difference once again so that we can create our trim in the window for our frame Luckily, all of our windows are the same, so we don't have to. Uh, we don't have to do too much work. So now that I've created the frame for the window, uh, I'm going to come in and clean this up a bit. or I'm sorry, our trim pieces uh, that we're going to come back and make. Um, so now we can move on to, so that was the casement windows. So we can move on over here to these. I believe these are also former casements.
All right. <clears throat> and so we're almost done with our windows. We have uh, two more to do or two more sets of windows to do. Um, here's our progress so far that we have for our building. <clears throat> Let's get started. So we go back to shaded. We are going to take the profile once again with this window. We're just going to make that vertical. Copy that. We're going to move it right into um, the spot that we need it. frame is four foot two, our trim is four foot two from the ground, according to the drawing, four foot six, not including the, uh, the trim, which is four inches. <clears throat> off here so um, I wish I grab these four foot two that's correct that is also correct. So we're going to take our box command. And then once again, we're just going to cut out this entire piece because we're going to go back and fix it. Um, it's much easier this way. <clears throat> There we go. So now we just have to worry about the um, the frame of the window, which we're going to come back and take care of later. Or the trim. So um, we have our last set of windows here. Um, these windows um, here are a bit trickier than the other ones, but nonetheless, the process will still be the same as long as we just 
I mean, we do have the reference here from the drawing, so that will make this process a lot easier. After that, our last um, aspect of this will be to actually put on the roof and the chimney, which it will be a bit tricky, but um, there's some tricks that we have to make that process a lot easier. And considering that we do have the reference drawing here, um, we should be able to actually put this together quite well. Um, the drawing or the 3D model is already coming together pretty well. Um, Everything is starting to look pretty accurate to how it's supposed to look. And uh, yeah, let's get started with this last window. I'm very pleased with this. So once again, we're going to select our references. Go ahead and give those a flip. I'm going to get ready to put those in the right spot. We're going to use the middle, for example, just to make sure everything lined up just right, uh, which appears to be the case. Everything looks just about right. All these sections here. And so I'm going to move the, tr the trim of the window um, up to the point that we're going to measure. Also, as you can see, um, we are going to run out of space um, worth of our walls because the wall actually is a lot taller than um, than nine foot here. So we're going to have to work around that. I'm going to show you guys how we're going to do that. Basically, what we can do is we can extend. We can extend the top portion of our building upward more, um, and it could be it could be fairly dramatic because what we're going to do actually is we're actually going to build the uh, the roof and the root. We can actually cut it, so um, you know it, it doesn't it's not going to uh, affect our building. We'll, we'll be able to fix it. So once we bring this up, it can be as tall as it needs to be, um, just so that we can get our, our window heights and everything correct, and then we can come back and fix exactly how the roof is gonna gonna come together. And the once we create the roof, it's actually going to penetrate the walls and it's gonna cut, it's gonna separate the top from the bottom. And um, I'll demonstrate that soon. According to our reference, our window trim is two foot two off of the ground. So we just want to make sure that is accurate.
everything's looking correct here. Um, and so we're gonna get ready to cut. <clears throat> and so since this shape here is quite trickier than our other windows, it's not exactly, or it's not a box. So we can actually use this reference once again to, um, to be able to cut our profiles out. We're going to use this piece here. This piece will set um, the course for the rest of our pieces. <laughs> So what we what I did there was I cut the profile out of the entire wall. Sorry. So um, what we have to do is we have to plane our surface. I accidentally deleted that curve, so we are going to plane our surface once more Wonderful. So there we have our windows. Um, we've completed all of our windows. Um, so now we can start working on our roof structure. So our roof structure is um, fairly complex. So um, one thing that we could do is we can start we can start with the front of our house. And once again, since we have our silhouettes already, it makes our job a lot easier. So I'm just going to select these pieces here. I'm going to rotate those. as a reference is eight feet off the ground of our 
third step. So we're going to use this reference line to um, to get our eight foot mark. And uh, as you can see, this line is straight. And so we can take this piece here. So as you can see, it's not perfect just yet, but um, we can fix that. One way is to actually rotate this. And check our side views just so that we can have an accurate um, visualization. Where things should go. But before we do that, what I'm going to do is um, I'm gonna tilt this back up, make a copy. these together. Go back to our elevation and then make sure that we line everything up properly. And one tool that's pretty useful is um, oops. we can come to our gumball and we can uh, reset or relocate it to here just so that we can line it up just right. So everything appears to be lined up correctly. And so we can take our, our roof structure here, and we can get that in the exact location that we need it, which is right there. So that piece that we just created here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create a roof layer. Since we have this already in the correct location, with the correct profile, everything um, everything seems to match the elevation here. We can actually just make our um, the piece that we just made. What I like to do is I'm just going to extrude this all the way through.
actually before I do that. Before I do that, I'm going to make sure that the structure, even though it lines up on that side, I'm going to make sure it lines up on this side as well. So I will flip this up, make a copy, um, and I'm going to go into this elevation. And I'm going to relocate my gumball. I'm going to relocate the gumball to the stairs as a reference point. And then I'm just going to make everything match. Uh, and there we go. Spot on. So, which means this piece here. Um, that we have. This piece here will be moved to here because that's the exact location of it according to this elevation. And this is why it's important for our elevations because it just makes our job so much easier because we have a reference of each side of the building that we can essentially just put together because we've already done what we needed to do from the actual like elevation as for punching the holes in. So now it's time to use our rel uh, relative locations for our roof. And which also means that I know or I can tell where the roof should stop. So this roof is going to this roof is going to come all the way through and then it's going to stop about there. But before I do that, I could get the same exact same silhouette from this side of the roof to go in the opposite direction. Because, um, well, as you can see, according to the drawing, um, this part of the roof will come this way and meet this side of the roof that's going to come the other way and then we're going to join them together and once we join them together we'll be able to get rid of this extra part of our um, of our walls and that'll basically finalize our building so now that i have this piece here um in elevation uh, i can work on this piece here oh i'm sorry I can work on this piece. Um, and so let me show you how this will work. Very similar to the other pieces. I'm just going to collect all these pieces here. And I'm going to uh, branch it off. I know where it is. It's just a matter of how far which this elevation will let me know exactly how far to to, um, to put this piece. So what I'm going to do is change or actually So as you can see, I'm looking at this elevation here, which tells me which direction back and forth my um, my roof structure will go. However, the elevation on this side will let me know where that piece starts. So that piece starts exactly here.
And so now I know exactly in each direction how far my roof will go and exactly where they will meet one another. So um, let me show you. So this roof structure, um, the surface, I'm sorry, will go all the way up until here. other direction my roof structure So this piece actually, I'm sorry, this piece. So now let's separate um, let's separate our walls and the rest of this roof. Even though we still have to create our chimney, um, that's a lot easier to do. works.
and there we have it. So we have our completed drawing or our 3D drawing. Um, Everything looks correct. And we can always put materials on here. And then we can also clean this up here, actually. show you how we'll do that. So there may be an easier way to close this patch. Um, however, a lot of times with geometry and Rhino, uh, things can get complicated. Um, and this is just one of those instances and so I'll have to manually close this. I'll show you. Uh, Another option is always you can use the surface tool. 
to close things up. It can get complicated. <laughs> You might always want to find the easiest way. Lastly, um, we can make a ceiling in here before we, or actually we can make our chimney. Um, So we are going to create our chimney uh, really fast. Um, using all these curves actually.
and well, just like that, um, we've created our home. And um, it'd be nice to add materials to this um, to get a nice finished look of, of your choice. Um, it was a nice a, a way to essentially show how we could use our floor plans and elevations from AutoCAD to create a 3D model. Um, everything that I did was basically just a reference and you know we, we used everything that was already created to create this uh, 3D model here. It took some time but I'm sure that you guys would be able to do it as well. Um, I hope you all enjoy.